Hi, my name is Grace McDaniel. We will be continuing our series on the truth about the creation account. Our subject for this lesson is Life Outside the Garden, Lesson 30. As we discussed in our previous lesson, Genesis 3 verses 22 through 24 reported that the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. In Genesis 3.24, we are told, And after he God drove the man out. He placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim. Please notice the word drove in the Hebrew language can also mean cast out, put away, divorce, or thrust out. In this case, we're looking at God thrust. Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were forcefully driven out of the Garden of Eden to begin an unknown journey outside of the Garden in the land of Eden. The Bible reports that God, out of his love and mercy, for Adam and Eve expelled them so that they would not eat now of the tree of life and live forever in a sinful state. We also learned that God chose to use cherubim to guard the tree of life. It was God who stationed cherubim at the east end of the Garden of Eden after Adam and Eve were sent away in an easterly direction. As we shall see in the future, God allows mankind to make geographical movements that are normally easterly in direction. In the Jewish culture, Jewish people normally list directions starting with the east, Unlike we do in the West, we normally start with the North. Nevertheless, the cherubim guarded the eastern entrance to the Tree of Life with a sword. At this juncture, God is placing great importance on the Tree of Life. Each angelic being must have had a flaming sword which turned every way. As we discussed from our last lesson, the flaming sword was an angelic sword with a special type of flame which would burn up anything that got in its way and it turned every way. Thus, this flaming sword suggests strongly that this blazing sword was a powerful, swift, and highly destructive sword that could cut up anyone and anything that came in its path, as well as spew out fire to burn and or consume. Hence, God ensured that no one would be able to return to the Garden of Eden to the tree of life. God created a forceful barricade that now exists between the Garden of Eden, which represents the spiritual realm and the physical world, where Adam and Eve were driven out to live. The cherubim and the flaming swords provided strong security to the interests and to guard the way to the tree of life. In fact, 
no one would be able to devise a way back to the Garden of Eden without risking death. Unfortunately, man's loss access to the tree of life because he was now a subject of death in a sinful state and a sin cursed world. You may ask, what happened to the tree of life? No one knows for sure. Speculating, there is the possibility that the Garden of Eden and all that was in it were destroyed by the flood of Noah's day. We also need to understand that perhaps with sin in the world, since Adam and Eve disobeyed God, their entire universe would be affected as well as the ground and all vegetation. With disease and death, there is a possibility that the tree of life does not exist today on this earth because if the ground was cursed, the tree of life would then be affected. The Bible does not express any detailed information about the survival or movement of the tree of life from the Garden of Eden. However, we are introduced to the tree of life in three scriptures in the book of Revelation. In Revelation 2, 7, God told the churches that whoever overcomes, he will give them the right to eat from the tree of life in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation 22, 2 states that in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river, the tree of life, which bear twelve manner of fruit, and yield her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Lastly, in Revelation 22, 14, God stated that blessed are those who keep his commandments, that they may have the right to eat of the tree of life and may enter by the gates into the city. As we concluded this Bible lesson, it is very important that we understand that the fall was all part of God's perfect and eternal plan for creation. Again, we should be aware that the fall did take place early in the creation account, which introduced the exceeding sinfulness of sin. God's plan for man after the fall is to demonstrate to men his glory by how he deals with sin, both in judgment and mercy, which can only be displayed to the fullness by God himself. As we begin our today's lesson on Adam and Eve living outside of the Garden of Eden, people are curious to know how long was Adam and Eve in the garden before they were banished from the garden. Truthfully, we really do not know. However, we have Christians who are progressive Christianists and theistic evolutionists who feel that Adam and Eve resided in the Garden of Eden a long period of time before they were driven out by God from the Garden. And then there are others who feel it was not a long period of time. As always, we must keep in mind that the Bible does not provide us specific, direct information regarding the length of time Adam and Eve were in the garden. There are certain scriptures that suggest that our first parents were not in the garden for a long period of time. 
There are two New Testament scriptures that may shed light on the length of time Adam and Eve were in the garden before they were expelled. John 8, 44 tells us, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. Note from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Luke 11 verses 45 through 52 state, Then answered, one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying thou reproachest us also. And he said, Woe unto you also, ye lawyers, for ye led men with burdens grievous to be born, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. Truly ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them, and ye built their sepulchres. When we combine these scriptures together, we find that Jesus placed the murder of Abel near the foundation of the world some years after the creation account, but close enough for Jesus to associate it to the foundation of the world. Jesus also stated that the devil was a murderer from the beginning, with the Jews following in the devil's footprints as recorded. From the scriptures in Genesis, we know that the day Adam and Eve sinned in the garden was not an unanticipated event. God, in his foreknowledge, knew that Adam and Eve were going to sin. Based on the creation account in Genesis 1 and 2, Adam and Eve sinned after the seventh day of the creation account. Because God concluded on the last day, which is the seventh day of the creation account, that everything was good. On the seventh day, we note that God rested on the seventh day and he sanctified the seventh day. Therefore, we must conclude by deducing from the scriptures that Adam had to have sinned after the seventh day, most likely in the beginning of the second week of the creation account. It could have been the eighth day, which would be the beginning of the second week, but no one knows for sure. We even have one author who feels it was the tenth day because of the Day of Atonement. What we do know is that Adam and Eve were created on the sixth day, the first day of their lives. God sanctified the seventh day, which is the second day of Adam and Eve's lives. So we must conclude that sometime later, during the second week of their lives, Adam and Eve sinned against God. Genesis 5, 5 tells us plainly that all the days that Adam lived were 930 years. With the knowledge that Adam had lived a total of 930 years, Adam did not live 930 years in the Garden of Eden. That is impossible because of his sin. As we gather all possible information to come to a correct conclusion, we must look at other scriptures 
concerning the birth of Adam and Eve's children as when they were expelled from the Garden of Eden. Genesis 4.25 conveys that after Cain killed Abel, Seth was born. Seth was certainly born after Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden, which would still be Eden, but outside of the Garden of Eden. According to Genesis 5.3, which reads, we become aware that Adam was 130 years old when Seth was born. Now let's reason. If Adam was 130 years old when Seth was born outside of the Garden of Eden, after Cain killed Abel, then we must conclude that Adam and Eve could not have been in the Garden of Eden any longer than 130 years. It also appears, according to Genesis 4.1, that Adam and Eve had no children in the Garden of Eden. Only after Adam and Eve left the Garden, they began to have children. It appears, according to the overview of the scriptures, that Eve did not have any children born in the Garden of Eden. It appears that all her conceptions and births were only after they were expelled from the Garden of Eden. Therefore, we can deduce from the scriptures that Adam and Eve sinned against God shortly in the second week of their lives. God drove them out of the Garden of Eden to keep them from eating from the tree of life and living forever in a sinful state. When God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden, they were forced from the presence of God. They had to forfeit fellowship with God. They had breached a very important relational ship with God. Adam and Eve's one sin not only separated them from God, but breach a beautiful, healthy relationship based on trust. As we recall, Adam and Eve trusted the serpent more than they trusted God. Thus they turned their backs on God. Adam's one deliberate act of disobedience brought sin into his life, which resulted and a constitutional change in his nature from innocence to sinfulness which brought alienation from God. Therefore, when God drove them out of the Garden of Eden, life from an Eve outside of the Garden would not be as easy. Life would be drastically different for Adam and Eve. Notice now that Adam and Eve were driven out of the garden and thrust into a new and different environment in Eden associated with evil and cursed by God. This new and different environment would be no garden of Eden for them and it would be no paradise. This new environment would bring sorrow, pain, suffering, disappointment, and death. In addition, Adam and Eve would have to struggle to live and thrive. They would have to work hard for their food. The very ground was cursed by God. God cursed the ground so that the ground would rebel against Adam as Adam had rebelled against him. Adam would have to work hard to cultivate the ground and fight for everything produced from the ground. God made sure that the thorns and thistles would grow everywhere in the ground to prevent immediate produce. Hence, 
the thorns and thistles would make it hard for Adam to get anything from the ground. Outside of the Garden of Eden, God made it so that Adam would have to till the ground and toil for his food by the sweat of his brow. Thus, Adam and Eve would forever remain outside of the Garden of Eden. Thank you for joining God's Grace Ministries. God's Grace Ministries is a bi-monthly, 24-minute program released on the second and fourth Saturday of each month at 9 o'clock p.m. Please subscribe. You will be encouraged, challenged, and inspired by the Word of God. You can call for CDs for $10 and DVDs for $15 at 231 894 0091. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.